Hello, my loves. I am Dr. Emma Nagy, and this is the My Light Away podcast. This is the ultimate self-development podcast where we'll dive deep into all things motherhood, mindset, and manifestation to create a life you are in love with. So let's dive in and get ready to expand the ripple effect you have in this world. Hello, my loves. Today, we are going to talk about the top five lessons to take from pregnancy and bring into your whole motherhood journey. I don't know about you, but for me, pregnancy was such a time of self-growth. And when I think back to my pregnancies, I feel like I was like also the most like accepting and in love with my life that I have ever been. And we often like look at the difficult situations in life, or if you have like a similar mindset or like a growth mindset, you do this. When you experience challenges or discomfort, you look for the lessons and it kind of gives you meaning through that time. And what were sometimes less, I guess, I don't know, taught to do less I don't know. Yeah, maybe it's maybe we don't do this as often and that's why I'm bringing it to the forefront is look at what is working super well in your life when things are going really well and look for the lessons there too. Like rather than just like enjoy them and then skip over them, apply what we've learned about ourselves from those times and incorporate that into our life. And so that is the inspiration for today's episode. And yeah, what are the five things in pregnancy that you can do and then take with you into your life? The most important lesson that I took that I would truly recommend just doing this is to practice presence. Pregnancy was such a time of deepening presence for me I, it was the, I guess like the clearest stage of my life where I was just so happy and grateful and accepting of where I was in life and I didn't want to rush it in any way and I wasn't wishing time away. I was truly just present and that is a skill, um, There's a lot of reconditioning to learn to be present again. Little children are so good at being present, like babies, they're just, yeah, they're just walking from moment to moment and they are in each moment. And as adults, we sometimes forget that, especially the way our world is set up where we're often on the go or, you know, we're really like rewarded to achieve more, to do more, to have more, um, to get more. And something so freaking powerful that I do this every day, um, especially if like my anxiety is high or just if I want to deepen into a really good moment is I practice presence. And it can look like just bringing yourself where you are, like to where you are now and doing it over and over again. Um, And it sounds so simple, it kind of is, but we also have so much conditioning and even like the way our brains work often can bring us out of the present. And so that is one of the most beautiful things that pregnancy truly, truly taught me that now I bring into every stage of motherhood to really soak it in as much as I can and soak in my life as much as I can. And it's definitely not always easy, even though the practices to bring yourself into presence are simple. But presence is so powerful for many reasons. Um, One of them, and if you guys haven't read The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle, that book was life-changing when I read it. And I feel like, I don't know, you have to be in a right state or at the right time to read it to get the most out of it. When I got to the point where I was like, yeah, I'm into this because, okay, a little backstory tangent that isn't really a huge detail, but my, my, um, I have two younger brothers and one of them gave me this book and I think I was like 20 probably. And 
I tried to read it, but I just, I was just like, eh, like I couldn't get into it. So it just sat on my bedside table for ages. And it probably was like years later, like maybe like eight years. I'm like, ah, oh, he's so wise. Um, my brother for giving it to me and, uh, and for reading it himself at, he was probably like 18, which is quite cool. But yeah, maybe like eight or 10 years later, I was finally like ready to read it. And by ready, I just mean I saw it again. And then I was like, hmm, I'm just going to give this a try. And it just spoke to me and I read the whole thing. And it's actually pretty amazing how the book, the whole book is about presence. And you would think that, you know, you'd run out of things to say after like a few pages or even a chapter, but it just really um, shifted something in me. And the thing about presence that I took from that book that I now apply in my day to day is that you can end your own suffering in just moments by bringing yourself back into the present and grounding yourself into the present and reminding yourself you are safe in the present because suffering is usually like most of the time caused by, well, often our own minds and it's things that we're maybe reliving, recreating from the past, um, maybe like worry, regret, shame, you know, those feelings we've brought from the past or related to anxiety and worry about the worrying about the future and just, yeah, like really also just overthinking. Like there are so many different ways that we can create suffering. And of course, if you have like, you know, something physical, like physical health issues going on, that can ignite that feeling of suffering too. But oftentimes, and I remember this is what the book said, if you bring yourself into the present moment and you are just fully in it, you don't experience that feeling of suffering because most of the time we're very safe in the present moment. So presence is such a beautiful practice and pregnancy, um, for me anyway, deepened it so much because, you know, there's like something like your body is shifting every day. You like feel little movements, you know, as you get later in your pregnancy and those things always bring you back to the present. So that just like, yeah, there are so many amazing ways to practice presence during pregnancy. And that is the thing that I find the most valuable in my motherhood journey now, like a few years in. The second thing that pregnancy taught me, um, which is still definitely a practice to this day, and something I'm always deepening into, is getting comfortable with the uncomfortable. And you guys know if you're pregnant or have been pregnant before, or maybe have like not are not pregnant yet, but I've heard, um, you know, stories from other people's pregnancy journeys that pregnancy brings up some uncomfortable stuff, like physically, of course, um, especially in the first trimester with, you know, exhaustion. Some people experience sickness. Some people experience sickness the whole way through. Um, yeah, just physical discomforts later in pregnancy as your body starts to shift and get ready for baby. And pregnancy can sometimes like slow, yeah, slow you down from the movements that you're used to being able to do, that can shift too. And so being uncomfortable is part of different stages of pregnancy and it does look different for every single person and even from pregnancy to pregnancy. For me, I was pretty lucky in terms of like, I didn't feel nauseous or anything during my pregnancies. Um, the tiredness was something that really hit me. And then in my second pregnancy, I found I was a lot more physically uncomfortable, especially near the end compared to my first. And I don't know if it's because it was my second um, baby. So things were, you know, like shifting and moving more easily. Um, I also sit a lot for my job. So that was definitely contributing to it. And what else? Um, yeah, maybe it was just an age thing too. You know, I was a couple of years older by that point. So whatever the reason, I was more physically uncomfortable during that pregnancy compared to my first. However, 
I really challenged myself to get uncomfortable, get comfortable with the uncomfortable because, and it kind of links into number one, I didn't want to wish away my time, you know, I didn't want to tell my body like, ugh, like, no, like, let's just, I can't wait for this to be over. I didn't even allow myself to go there mentally, to wish that time away, to wish for a time where my body was more comfortable because I just didn't, yeah, I didn't want to skip any parts of my life and I just wanted to be in it fully. And in my second, I was just so aware from experiencing the baby stage with my first, how fast it goes. And he was still kind of a baby himself at that point. Like I got pregnant with um, my second son when my first was like a year and a half. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, because there's two years between them. Wait, two years and three months. Anyway, whatever that whatever that math is. <laughs> but he was changing so much, you know? And so I was just so aware that our, you know, relationship and our household dynamic would change when we brought the second one in. And of course, it was like bringing more love in and like a little sibling for my first. And, you know, there were so many amazing things. But I also just really loved that one-on-one time with my first as well and I just wanted to soak that in so I learned to I guess like make the most of and find more comfort in the discomfort and now how I apply that is actually mentally like and let me explain what I mean by that a lot of my discomfort now in life is less like physical related because I'm grateful to most of the time being great health And, you know, I try and take really good care of my body or as much as I could do better. But, you know, I do make a conscious effort to take good care of my physical body um, so that I do feel, you know, so I do feel good. And for me, what I'm working on and it goes in phases, but right now is like my mental health and decreasing my anxiety and, you know, just, yeah, elevating my mood and my energy And sometimes life is uncomfortable. Sometimes, especially like different changes in life can be super uncomfortable. And even just like growing a business, there's so much discomfort in that and like pushing yourself out of your comfort zone. And so even happy changes can bring stress, right? So for me, it's about learning to even like get comfortable with the discomfort of constantly putting myself out of my comfort zone with my business because I don't want that to take away from the joy in my life or I don't want to wish away this time and that's something I'm constantly bringing myself back to especially as someone who like I love manifesting I love creating goals I have things you know in the future that I'm excited to do create um, experience but I don't want to wish away the now so and if the now is uncomfortable if I'm pushing myself out of my comfort zone all the time or if my anxiety is high I don't want those things to rob me of the joyful moments of these times as well so it's like finding that comfort in the uncomfortable moments number three was a really big one for me it was around learning to connect to my body and learning to listen to my body And actually before pregnancy, I got much better at this. And I actually realized even, you know, thinking about like, oh, I would like to become pregnant and just learning about how my body works, how my cycle works. All of that stuff was actually quite new to me. And I, yeah, there was so much that I learned in that stage. And I really carried that through to my pregnancy and stayed connected to my body, which really helped me to have a healthy pregnancy to you know gain like gain weight for my baby um and you know for also for myself after having the baby you know there are so many of course like really healthy benefits to gaining weight during my pregnancy so I actually didn't feel resistance towards gaining weight during my pregnancy and I feel like I had a really healthy and actually really lovely body image um I felt the most confident I've ever felt in my body up to that point during pregnancy. Like I 
love, I just loved it. I loved the changes that were happening to my body. I was so like curious about them and excited about them. And I think attributed a lot of positive, um, I had a lot of positive beliefs around and stories that I would tell myself around, yeah, around these changes that were happening. And it was really lovely because I got to connect with my body so much more. And I think that really helped me in postpartum to heal and helped me through birth for sure. That connection with my body to have two, you know, natural, um, empowering, listen to my podcast episode on my birth story that didn't go according to plan, but even that one was empowering and my connection with my body helped me out, um, throughout that experience. But, and then even now, you know, throughout just regular motherhood, I think it's so important to listen to our bodies, especially if we're, you know, busy taking care of little ones, busy working, you know, we have like other life responsibilities. And so being able to do quick check-ins with your, with your body and giving it what it needs is super, super important. The fourth thing that I really would encourage you guys to do during pregnancy and then bring that with you is consciously connect to others. And during pregnancy, there are so many beautiful little ways that you can do this, but consciously connect with your baby. Like take micro minutes, even like seconds every day and just tune into them and you know, you can send them love, you can just be with them, you can be present and like pay attention to their little movements and just, you know, soak that in, appreciate that. I know some people, it's so funny, I know some people like that weirds them out to like think of that, but I just adored it and adored that connection. Um, So yeah, take what resonates and leave the rest with everything I share. Oh, my little one my little one has a cough right now and he's sleeping so sorry if you guys can hear that in the background but it's just such a beautiful way to build your connection with them during pregnancy and then in motherhood now and just in life I love to just like tap into the energy of my little ones like send them love I do this with like with my husband sometimes he doesn't know this he's gonna be like what um And just, yeah, people I care about and just like send out love to them. And it just, you know, some people do it in the form of prayer. Um, I like the energy side of it too. And I feel like it can just build connection over time is that, yeah, that connection that you have with your babies, it just stays even in motherhood, of course. And it just grows and grows and grows. Um, but that's something that I love to do. And even with my little ones now, you know, I just love to take even like a few seconds and just be super present with them, really connect with them every single day. And, you know, that's especially amazing in those mom guilt moments where you might think like, oh no, I haven't, you know, spent that much time with them today or I haven't gotten to see them very much today or I've been in my head so much today like I feel like I haven't been truly here that's like a sign that you get to do that practice for yourself the fifth and final one I'll make this short and sweet is that you are never alone and in pregnancy obviously you are never actually alone because you have this like little human inside of you and that was one of my favorite parts of pregnancy. I adored that connection and it was just so comforting to, you know, never be alone and like always have that like little person with you who, you know, you got to connect with and I don't know, there's like a bond, there's such a deep bond happening there. And it was something I really missed after I had my first baby. Um, I remember the very first time I left him was to go, I think, yeah, I went to the pharmacy, a three minute drive from my house. I was probably gone for 20 minutes, (laughs) but I remember, and I think it was like a week postpartum or yeah, week and a half, something like that. And I remember crying on the way to the pharmacy because I realized, and of course, like all the hormones, right? I realized I wasn't, I was alone. Um, 
And I just like so, yeah, missed that connection. And of course, I reminded myself that, you know, my baby is like here now and I get to connect with him in a whole new way. But I didn't want to feel alone. And that is something I feel like my faith um, and my life and the people around me constantly remind me of is like you are never actually alone even you know when you're physically alone there's not like (laughs) you're not pregnant anymore you're never alone and there are always like people around wanting to support you um if you have faith like if you believe in like god or the universe or whatever whatever kind of whatever you believe in you are never alone and that is something that I love to remind myself of now, especially, you know, sometimes motherhood can be a little bit isolating. Sometimes, you know, we all feel lonely. That's like a normal um, human emotion. And then in those times, it's so comforting to just remind yourself that you are never alone. And If you are feeling lonely or if you are in the stage of motherhood right now where it does feel isolating um, or even if you just want to elevate things, okay, this is number six, um, even though I said I would do five, but let's just add an extra, extra little gift on top today. Number six is to allow in supports and we do that naturally in pregnancy, you know, it's like normal, like, okay, you're pregnant, get a midwife or get an OB or get a doula, like you ramp up your supports. Maybe, you know, maybe you're like me and like to do extra supports on top of that. So, um, you know, like a dietitian, like you're wanting to be as healthy as you can be. Like I remember going to my counselor and just wanting to be in like tip top shape that way. I went to a pelvic floor physiotherapist, which moms all get one if you can, cause they're amazing. Um, yeah, there are so many things we do in pregnancy to beef up those supports. And then we often kind of carry them through the postpartum stage, although much less, like after birth, a lot of our supports dwindle quite quickly. Um, And then after postpartum, we might have zero supports unless you consciously put them in place, right? So I would just say, get an army of supports around you whenever you want and elevate the supports around you to help you elevate like your mood and your energy as well and help you be the healthiest and happiest you can be. And supports can come in so many different um, shapes and sizes and varieties. So I always encourage people to tap into your intuition at each given time in your motherhood journey to see what supports are the most supportive to you. So those are the six things from pregnancy that were huge life lessons and are so helpful today to look at. Let me know what was your favorite one. And also if you are a mom already and you experienced your own kind of um, life lessons that you took from pregnancy and apply today, let me know. And also if you're pregnant right now, what are the things you've been learning about yourself that you're like, ooh, yeah, I want to take this into my life. Like this is going to help me going forward. Send me a message and let me know. Thank you so, so much for listening. I would love to hear how you felt inspired in today's episode. Let me know at My Light Away on Instagram. And to help me expand the ripple effect of this podcast even more, please subscribe, leave a rating and review, or share it with a friend who loves self-development too. Thanks, my loves. I can't wait to hear from you.